Hello and welcome to Lavender City. We're here with the most terrifying stories from people who have had camping experiences. Hear about what they saw or did while out there? They're all too real. Don't forget to subscribe before moving on down to story one. Story one. It was a hot summer day when I went camping with my brother and one of his best friends. We pitched our tent near the river, which is where all sorts of adventures began for us. The National Scenic Riverway is a part of the National Park Services system, and they have certain rules about camping along this gorgeous stretch in order for everything not to get ruined. We were so excited when we found a perfect island on the map for our camping trip. It was an island with three camping sites, and we figured that since it was the middle of summer, other campers would have claimed them also. We were all so excited when we got to the island, but as soon as we arrived, we could tell something was wrong. The water level was way higher than it should have been, and there wasn't a dry spot in sight. We found the only dry spot on the island, but it was barely big enough for our tents. We were well aware of the regulations against camping outside of designated areas, but with another five miles to go until we reached the takeout point, there was no other choice. The only dry land on it was about 30 feet by 10 feet, and thick with grass and bushes. The river was treacherous at night, and none of us wanted to risk our lives trying to make it through in the dark. We made camp on the small patch of dry land, pitching our tents as quickly as we could before nightfall. We were in the middle of nowhere, with no other campers in sight. Our only hope was to find some wood before nightfall. There was zero firewood on the island, so we couldn't even cook dinner. So we made do with what little food we had brought. Tents were pitched as best as possible in an attempt to stay dry, but the cold night air crept through our jackets and sleeping bags. We huddled together for warmth, but it wasn't enough. The darkness felt endless, and the only sound was our own breathing. It was close to midnight when we heard a beaver smack its tail in distress. The animals were making an awful lot of noise for being so near to us. And then we heard something that sent shivers down our spines. A series of strange grunts, followed by the sound of something large crashing through the undergrowth behind us. We assumed it must be a deer or bear. But then something happened that chilled us to the core. We heard what sounded like a cantaloupe-sized rock being thrown through the canopy and into the river east of us. Whatever was on our island had the ability to throw big rocks, which it carried with it from across shore. The nearby islands are pure sand and mud devoid of boulders. There's just no way anything could have made those throws without bringing its own material. We soon realized it was a giant creature, either tall enough to walk on land or strong enough to swim across the river with rocks. The sun had set hours ago, and the only thing that lit our campsite was the sliver of moon in the sky. We knew it could kill us if it wanted to, so we sharpened sticks into spears and waited. The creature eventually moved on, crossing the river and disappearing into Wisconsin. We never saw it again, but that experience left me forever cautious around large bodies of water. That's the last time I ever went camping unarmed. Story 2 I'll never forget the summer I spent camping in the Rockies. It was my first time really venturing out into nature, and I was excited to explore everything the area had to offer. The first few days were great. We hiked around the lake, caught some fish, and generally just enjoyed being in the beautiful surroundings. But on the fourth day, things changed. I was sitting around the campfire with my friends, telling stories and roasting marshmallows. As I sat around the campfire with my friends, we told stories to each other. Stories about how much fun it is until someone brings up ghosts. Immediately the moods changed, and now all of us are scared because our tents don't have lights or anything else inside them besides stars, which aren't really enough protection against something fake, like ghosts. We packed up our things to head back into the tent. I tried to go to sleep, but I couldn't stop thinking about the stories we had heard, and I eventually just gave up and went outside. I sat by the fire for a while and went back to sleep, and then we heard a scream coming from across the lake. We all woke up in a panic and started trying to figure out what it was, but could see nothing in the darkness. A few minutes later, another one screamed back from across the lake. My friends and I were both dozing off in my tent when we heard a loud animal scream very close by. It sounded like some kind of large animal, but we had no idea what it could be. It was high-pitched and terrifying, 
and it sent shivers down our spines. We all looked at each other, wondering who would be brave enough to investigate. We were debating whether or not to go outside and see if we could find out when we heard it again. This time even closer than before. It sounded like something was scratching around the tent, but I knew all the animals in the area and I couldn't identify what it was. Then it started getting louder and more frequent. I was terrified that there was some sort of monster out there attacking our tent. We were out in the middle of nowhere camping. It wasn't the coyotes or raccoons, and it definitely sounded like something big because we could feel all this tension inching towards us through ground zero as if whatever made these sounds wanted to scare everyone inside into leaving right then. I think it might have been a cougar, but I'm not sure. Whatever it was, we were glad when it finally went away. I'll never forget the morning we woke up to every dog in the campsite barking and cowering in fear. We saw a few that had been leashed outside and were still hiding under us. To this day, I maintain it was either Bigfoot or a massive cougar. Story 3 I had been feeling a little stressed lately and decided to go on an impromptu camping trip. My parents often took me to this spot when I was younger and it had always been one of my favorite places. I bought everything I needed overnight in the forest such as a sleeping bag, sweatshirt and extra socks. Those were all that remained for me now they would have to do. The basket was filled with food items, instant coffee, canned goods such as fruits or vegetables. It was a beautiful day as I drove to the canyon. The sun was shining and the birds were singing. I felt so happy and free. As I drove further into the canyon, the trees got smaller and fewer until there were none left at all. But that didn't bother me. I knew of a spot just beyond the fork in the road where I could camp for the night. The spot was perfect. It was green and secluded and I could cry and howl all I wanted without anyone hearing me. As evening began to fall, I built a fire and sat around it, enjoying the warmth. I slept in the back of my SUV, which I had turned into a temporary bed. I left the key in the ignition in case I needed to leave quickly. I must have bumped the lock setting on the car door without realizing it. While I was sitting by the fire, singing to myself, a gust of wind came and blew the door of the car shut. I didn't think much of it until I heard the sound of the lock clicking. In alarm, I jumped over the fire and tried each door. Of course, the car was completely locked. I took a deep breath and looked through the window at the key in the ignition. I checked my handbag for a spare, but I didn't have any luck. I found a bit of coat hanger wire and tried to get into the car with it but it didn't work. Then I tried to pick the door lock with a bobby pin from my handbag. That didn't work either. Dusk was creeping in around the edges of the canyon and the temperature was falling noticeably. These particular woods host bears and pumas. I would be better off sleeping in a shelter. I panicked when I felt the first twinge. I knew what I had to do. I hammered at a passenger window for half an hour until it shattered. It was getting dark, so I scooped tempered glass granules out of my bedding and moved the car keys. I was satisfied with the results and undressed, crawling into the sleeping bag. I rolled up my clothes for a pillow. I laid there and looked out the window that used to be there. I knew that dew would fall in the green canyon, so I tried to cover the hole with a thermal sunshade. Then I went to sleep. After a while, I woke up because I heard a loud noise near the back of the car. It was sniffing and it was close to me. My eyes were wide open and I controlled my breath so that he couldn't hear me breathe. I heard the animal sniffing and moving around the car. I could hear its heavy feet on the ground outside. I was very scared. I tried to sit up, but I was very afraid that the animal would attack me. I slowly reached for the car keys so that I could make a noise if it attacked me. The sniffing beast was right outside the broken window. I could hear it sniffing around the sunshade while I willed myself into fierceness rather than fear, and I waited while the sniffing intensified inches from my face. Finally, the beast left. I peeked out the window but saw no clues about what it was. I was having a restless night's sleep and woke up early to see a small puma watching me. I needed to pee so I tried to scare it away but it did not work. After that I had some coffee and oatmeal and left.